I'm going to be drawing the anatomical head that's up there. And I'm picking that because... <laughs> you what? Has there been enough on there? Is that okay? Right. I'm picking the anatomical head because uh, one, all of this, I want to, I, I want to say simplistic issues of light lines, not simplistic and easy, but simplistic and just those basic um, um, uh, general breakdowns of light are involved in this, but it's a complicated head. And usually when people have to draw something that's very complicated, but they have to apply issues that are very um, fundamental and basic, that's when things get all haywire and confused. So uh, I'm going to go through the steps of drawing this. Um, starting from basic uh, foundation, and I'm kind of kind of reference a little bit of what I talked about with the issue of how highlights work and how you can edit out highlights. It's kind of the same as editing out detail. So there's a lot of things on that head that I'm not going to include, and there's things I can't include that I can still get the feeling of it being an anatomical head. So. <laughs> I'm going to start like any other drawing, with an underdrawing getting my basic shapes There's the chin, side of the head, back of the head to the ear. Everybody see? And then right around where, just below the ear, is that muscle coming through. That's the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Everybody has it. it. Operates the neck. As it comes down, I can see an arc or an angle rather right here and an angle on the other side, which kind of feels somewhat like a triangle that gets cut off as they go to the edges there. And I come down. Taking, you could say, just the big envelope like shape. And also, if you're drawing a head, I'll take a quick uh, reference of where the center line comes in. Because that's a three quarter view head from my perspective, and that means that I'm not going to draw it like this. I have to make sure it looks like it's turning to the side, so I need to know where that center line comes in. So if I just start jumping in on the eyes and the nose, before I know it, I'm going to have the head looking like it's facing me, and it's actually not. So, center axis is lightly indicated. Let's say I don't like anything I've done right now. I'll take it right off. You know, it's pretty easy to correct. See the top of the ear. If I look close, I'll notice the ear goes at an angle from the highest point to the bottom ear lobe is over at an angle, not straight up and down. How are we supposed to make the drawing permanent? <coughs> if we could just easily just wipe it off. I'm going to get to that. It's something called a mall scene. You ever seen a portrait of Rembrandt or Vermeer in the head? They're holding their easel and they have this long, holding this long stick. You ever seen this in our history class? I'll show you one. I'll show you one before we're done. Uh, this is a long stick, and basically what they would do with it is they would lean it over their um, drawing, they'd rest their hand on it. No, you get you guys can um, oh, yeah, quick fix it. Uh, at this stage, I'm not worried about it. But let me find uh, any any quick thing. Long stick work. Actually, it nice. Let's say for some reason I was at a later stage in the drawing and I was going to detail it. Put that down. It's not the. Uh, you never seen that? <laughs> there's uh, there's a, a painting called uh, The Art of Painting by Romina. Can we Romina. use it all painting? Do what? Can we use it all painting? Yeah. 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 Ye
Yeah, if a painting you would do, obviously you can't put it on there. A painting you'd put it up here, and your stick would be a lot longer. And you would look at the, look up the painting called uh, Vermeer, the Art of Painting. So they think it's a self-portrait of him. There's a subject of his painting. There's his back. There's his easel. And you can see his long stick is holding. He puts the stick there. How are you ruining your YouTube? I'm doing it for you guys. I could care less about being a celebrity. I do. Screw that. If I'm a celebrity, then I'm going to have to get up in front of people, in front of like 500 people, and listen to myself, you know, actually the audio of it, and I don't want to do that. So, this is for you guys. I, so, I see the diagonal of the side of the head coming up, and at a certain point, I see, basically there's a turning point. It changes, and goes in another direction. That point where it changes is the cheekbone, which could be the equivalent of a turn in the drapery, a, equivalent of a turn in that cast over there or the point of a box. I want to know where it's at. So what have we done uh, earlier in the semester to find out where a, a point of a box is at? If we're drawing a still life and we see a turning point in an object, so like the corner of a box is a turning point, what do we do if we want to determine exactly where it's at? Measure the angles and measure that point of that to where the turn comes in and has something else. So I see that point, I'm going to measure it against the top of the ear, which I've already got established. And I can see roughly at an angle like that, where it intersects the diagonal off the side of the head. That's where there's going to be a point that changes. That goes up. And I can see the uh, zygomatic arch right here, which comes off of the ear. It's going at a very specific angle, slightly upward. I'm not putting that in for detail, I'm putting that in because that's a good indicator of how the direction of the side of the head, almost the equivalent of how you could look at the side of a box to see what the direction of a box is in perspective. And it ends right there, which is the corner equivalent to the other side, so you got the front and you got the side. So I am basically thinking about a very ornate, complicated object by fitting it in a box, just like we did with the, um, the sphere in perspective fit it in a box to get its correct relationship to everything else. The jaw is going down at an angle, the side of the head, the jaw comes into the ears at an angle. And the eyes, and the brow ridge, and the nose, and the um, mouth and the jaw, it's just like the, um, that box that's beneath it, the top edge of the box and the bottom edge of the box, they're all parallel to one another. So I'm going to look at them all in relation and find their angle just slightly in that direction. Bottom of the nose, lining up with the ear. Bottom of the mouth, lining up just below the ear. There is a general rule of about a head, the rule of thirds. One third, one third, one third. And that is anatomically true, but when you're in a situation drawing a head cast, for example, keep that in context with your eye level and with the way that the cast might be turned. So if you're drawing a cast for whatever reason, maybe in a few weeks it might be turned like that, but you're straight on to it, trying to draw this one third, one third, one third might not work because the perspective of it is changing. So you still gotta refer back to comparing basic points and measuring points. So, I mean, I think that's a pretty common, uh, common uh, understood anatomical measurement that everybody always tries to put into a uh, drawing when they're drawing anything that's figure-like. And then they end up with problems and they're confused why. It's because they're not referring back to basic observation. So, can everybody see this uh, strong cast shadow coming down right here? Basically shooting at a very specific angle. And block that in. So I'm getting my proportions now at the same time as I'm starting to think about where's the breakup of mass light, mass shadow. 